Hi, it's Krista at The Secret Yarnery. Today I'm going to share with you my ultimate guide for crochet borders and edges. In this video, I'm going to share with you the common mistakes, what could be stressing you out about a border, and easy, easy, easy ways to fix it. Now, you can put a border on any crochet item. Some don't need a border, which I will also be sharing with you borders for granny squares, crochet lace borders, some easy crochet border designs, and crochet borders for granny square blankets. I'm going to start out with the thing that stressed me out the most when I started doing borders is working working into the sides. I can work into the top of my stitches and I know what how many stitches are supposed to be on in on the side. If a double crochet is equal to three stitches, every row should be three stitches on the sides, but I'll also show you why that doesn't work. So this was my first time working in to the sides of a single crochet blanket. It's so messy, right? Not happy with it. I don't think it looks great. I think it looked, well, we tried with the gray to kind of like cover it up, like a darker color so you wouldn't really see how messy it was. The stitch count is all right. One single crochet to one single crochet, that kind of worked out. But just the messiness of it. Oh, you can see here in the yellow. Let me show you here. See how it's like messy. It doesn't look good working into the side of the blanket. So this is the last time that I did a blanket like that, working in like stitch by stitch into the side of a blanket. So I did not do it after this blanket right here and I will show you a fail proof way to never have your blankets looking like that. Now this is a gorgeous crochet lace border, but I just want you to see how I start it right here along the edge. So I'm working into the side, but see how often I go into it? Not often. So I'm doing single crochet and chain all around the sides, all around the whole blanket. Just like that. So single crochet, chain two, skip two, something like that. Whatever your stitch count is. And then after that, you work into it with whatever border you want. You can work in to the spaces or you can work in to the stitches, whatever you want to do. And you won't ever have a messy edge on your crochet blanket again. I will link these patterns as well as the videos for these tutorials in the description box down below. So just click show more if you want to see this border. There's also a playlist of all my crochet borders which I will also link in the description box. So this is the pin curl blanket with the loops and bridges border. And you can see why it's called loops and bridges. Isn't that gorgeous? It's so great. So that is a really nice crochet lace border. And also how I avoid working in stitch by stitch to the sides of my blankets. Now for working into the sides, you wanna do your single crochet chain X single crochet all the way around. Now X can be a chain two. So if you're doing a granny square stitch, it would be single crochet, chain two, single crochet. So you'd be single crocheting into the spaces and chaining two. You wanna keep the same stitch count. If you are doing a drunken granny, you can do a single crochet and chain three, single crochet. Just keep in mind what your stitch count was at the top of your blanket going widthwise and just mimic that along the sides. But also keep in mind while you're doing that row, it will be a little more tight than you think is appropriate. It'll start to curl up and you'll be like, oh my gosh, it's too, it's too thin, like it's too um, tight. I have to add more chains. Don't worry about it. Don't panic. Just keep going. When you work into it with your border, that little tight row of chains will help your border stay in shape, help your blanket stay in shape forever. So you do want it to be a bit tight when you're working in that single crochet and chain row. Another common problem with crochet borders and edges is your stitch count or your border gets too many stitches. It's too ruffly. So if you're joining your granny squares, it's a very common mistake to treat the join as two clusters when the joins are only one cluster. I did a video a few years ago just showing how to join 
not how to join your granny squares, how to edge your granny square blanket without adding those extra stitches. So I will link that down below as well. But the gist of it is at every join, can you see this little cluster here? So this is our join, the, the turquoise, and this is how we made it into one cluster. So your join, both of these clusters equal one cluster up top. So when you're edging, this whole join, only one set of double crochets, not two. So that is where your, I'm holding it the wrong way around. No, it wasn't, good. That is where your stitch count can get a little bit weird. If you treat your join as two clusters, really it is one cluster when you're working around. So go ahead and watch that video if you are working on a granny square blanket and you want your border to lay down nice and flat. And speaking of granny square blanket borders or borders for granny square blankets, I do the same way. I start the same way. So we start with our single crochet, chain two, skipping over to the next space, single crochet, chain two, single crochet into the next space all the way along. You can use either color, the color from your join or the color from your border. And then you work around into that, just into your spaces, three double crochets into each space. So that gets your granny square laying nice and flat. The trick is this row down here. When, you, when you're doing your join or you're doing your second layer around your whole, your second row around your whole blanket, you want to do a DC two tog in the center there. So starting four double crochets, but ending up with three. So that is the trick to granny square blankets laying nice and flat. And this granny square border, the finale, grand finale border, adds about seven inches to your blanket, both the width and height. So it is a super great border. If you have made your granny squares, but you're like, oh, can I just turn it into a blanket now? Yes, you totally can. Go ahead and put on this grand finale border. Now, if you are doing a granny square blanket and you don't wanna put a border on it, like this nice rectangular granny blanket, it is super huge and great. It does not need a border, in my opinion. It would take away from just the beauty, the simple beauty of the blanket itself. I didn't wanna put a border, but I still put an edging. So this, at the top of that, is still my usual single crochet, chain two, single crochet, chain two, single crochet, chain two. For this border, I did my single crochet into the center of my clusters and I chained over the space. Just to kind of make it a little bit unique, that helps your blanket not stretch out. You know how granny square blankets can get really loose on the edges? This helps it keep its shape. So as you're, as you're flicking your blanket, as you're folding it up, as it's getting used throughout its lifetime, it will hold its shape a lot better. Plus it doesn't look like you put a border on it. It just looks nice and simple and finished. So this border is part of this giant granny square blanket tutorial, also linked down below, but a great way to finish off a granny square blanket with an edging and not a border. Now, if you want to put a border or an edging on a blanket that has a different or more unique stitch count, this is double crochets, but in rows of four. Little, this berry biscuit baby blanket. It is super, 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 super cute. And on this one, I'll show you the edge. Look at that. So we just used little popcorns. It was tails to sew in, but oh, so worth it. So this is the front of it, and this is the back. It looks good both ways, right? Like this is Smarties. Hmm. Those are little popcorns. It's so cute. So this, I did my double crochets. I just kind of matched this center here. What we did in between the biscuits, I did along the edge. So double crochet, chain one, skip one and just worked in to the spaces or into the sides of those double crochets just to copy what we did in the blanket. So you can also do that when you are doing your own crochet border designs. So this is Berry Biscuit with Gumdrop Border. So cute and so fun to work up. 
Now another tip is finding a border or a crochet edging that matches the stitch count of your blanket. Lots of them are multiples of five, multiples of six, multiples of eight, multiples of 14, and you're like, oh my gosh, how's that ever gonna work out? I bring all of my stitch counts down with that single crochet and chain to either a multiple of four, a multiple of two, or a multiple of three, because we wanna keep it simple. We could double up your multiples of three to work into a multiple of six if you wanted to do a larger fan sort of border, or you can just keep it super simple with a small multiple. So doing those single crochets and chains really helps keep your border design in a tangible, easy to, to do way. And if you need to adjust that, Say you're doing a stitch count of three and at the end of the row you only have one stitch left or two stitches left or four stitches it won't work out exactly how you wanted it you can adjust that at your corners no one's really gonna see an extra stitch or one less stitch in that little corner area plus the border that you put in the corner will totally cover it up so you, that is where you can adjust or fine-tune your stitch count is when you get to those corners now let's talk a sec about drape and hang. Some of those borders, you want that swoosh, you want the drama, you want the hang. There are some ways to work around it, even if you are just using an acrylic yarn or if you can splurge on a natural fiber. So what I'm talking about to start off with is the Foxtrot border. So this is the global shawl with Foxtrot border. So it doesn't have to be on a blanket. This could be on a pillow, it could be on a shawl, on a wrap, it could be anywhere. Isn't that just stunning? The trick to this particular border is natural fiber. So this is a wool blend for the shawl, but for the bottom here, I used Cotton Bamboo Light. So that is a four worsted weight yarn. It's 60% bamboo, 40% cotton, and it's nice and thick, so squishy, but you can see the hang that it gives you. If you just used an acrylic yarn, it would kind of just be all scrunched up like that, and it wouldn't have that hang. So you can achieve a really nice swish and hang by switching to a bamboo or cotton yarn or a blend for your border. For the last row of it, it'll help the whole thing swish. Now, if you don't have access to a different type of yarn, you need to use the same kind of yarn for your border, but you still want some hang and some swish. This is a lovely shawl. This is the same as the gelato, sh gelato shawl, but the border, it's slightly different but same idea, and this is with the same yarn. So if you have the same yarn, another way of doing it is just more stitches. So just getting that weight and getting that hang by putting in more stitches. So these big shells hanging down, give it a nice swish and some hang. It just gives it that weight because there is just more yarn per stitch. So that is a nice, easy way of doing it if you don't have a different kind of yarn to use. This is the Aurora Dawn shawl with dragon tooth border. This border is just so stunning. So this is with Magic Light and cotton. So this is pure cotton or baby cotton 100G from Ice Yarns. It's gorgeous cotton yarn, so like dreamy and perfect. And this is acrylic on the ends. This is Magic Glitz. So it is a DK weight acrylic yarn. So I got the swish from doing the cotton above. So this cotton gives the swish and then the acrylic is lightweight. It just kind of hangs there, but the cotton all along here gives it that movement that you might be looking for. See all that swish? that comes from the cotton yarn. Even if you just want to put a super simple scalloped edge on a border or on your blanket for a border, you can also do that in the same way. So this is again, single crochet and chain spaces and then working into that space with those cute little shells. So no matter what you're doing, all of your borders can start, you don't have to, you can do your thing, but all of your borders can start with a single crochet, chain, skip, 
You just have to work out how many chains you are doing and how many stitches you are skipping and where you're putting your single crochet. Then you just edge that blanket and work with that multiple. So your chain and your single crochet will count as your stitch count. So if you're doing a single crochet and chain two, your multiple will be three. So you can, or six, depending on the size, but let's just say multiple of three. So if anything is getting you down about borders or you have a question, let me know in the comments and we can talk about it in an upcoming video. I'm waiting for you right there and stay hooked. Okay, crochet borders. Landed it. Uh, not this guy, not that guy. Not this guy, not that guy. Could be this guy. Uh, so that was stitch count. What? Working into the sides. Hold on. Uh, what else was I going to tell? That was stitch count working into the sides. Borders ruffling. That is going to be... Where's my little join guy? What? I'm really going into the bottoms. Ugh, everything. So many borders. Don't fall. Okay. I'm always going to the bottom of my stack. <laughs> oh, if I'm, maybe I should have stacked them in chronological order, the order I wanted to talk about them. If I knew the order, that might have been easier. I don't even know what I did here. <laughs> so fun to work out. And so fun to work up, not out. <laughs> okay, I got a thumbnail. Thumbnail. 